All right. As you said, I'm Michael Stark. I work at Microsoft because we have the same initials, MS. And um, the uh, we have a giveaway. We have a five signed copies of Charles Petzold's book on Bangerman forms. So um, the five lucky winners. The unlucky winners can just download the PDF, which has more chapters than that one does. <laughs> um, all right. I'm trying to connect to my Mac right now. Let's, let's uh, start the slideshow because you're here to see my ability to make slides, right? So the way I'll run this is I'll run through a bunch of slides, probably about 10, 15 slides on what Xamarin is, and and then um, then we'll jump into some code. So I got some code samples. You're not going to watch me code because you don't want to watch me code because it'll take too long and you lose track of where your fingers are when you're up here. So we'll just I'll show you some code I already have written, and and then um, then we'll have some questions maybe. All right, who, who's heard of uh, Xamarin before? Okay, who's tried to use Xamarin before? All right, um, who's got an iPhone? All right, who's, who, who has an app on their iPhone? Okay, all right, um, so along those lines, what are the three ways to make money with an app? Ads. Ads, okay, that's a good way. All right, what's the second way? Selling it. Selling it? All right, those are pretty good. Um, so with ads, you've got to get a whole lot of people to download it. And they're the right people, so they're, they're, they're uh, interested in the product that's being advertised. And if you're selling it, you either got to sell it for a whole lot of money or sell a whole lot of copies. The third way. In app purchases? Oh, that works too. Okay, there's four ways. Write an app for somebody else. That's it. <laughs> building it. Building it. Now, building it's one thing because uh, you're just free otherwise, but he had it right. You build it for somebody else, and hopefully their pockets are like freaking deep, right? Um, and that's what that's how many apps are in like the iOS store? Anybody count them recently? It's like a bazillion, right? It's like a million apps. So, so if, if I write the next Duck Quack app, that happens that's better than any other Duck Quack app. Crab app. Yeah. Well, that was mispronounced, but it works. Um, the, uh, it'll be one of a million, and that's a bad thing. Yeah. Sometimes one of a million is good when you're like trying to impress somebody, but one in a million when you're trying to sell an app is bad. So the, the apps that are, are going to be hired to do are enterprise apps, whether they're the consumer-facing enterprise apps like, like a, uh, a film booking app or, a, or an app to get a restaurant. Um, Reservation, those kind of apps that they interface with somebody's back end, whether it's Marriott or or uh, Delta or something. So those are those are the kind of apps they're going to pay for. And those people's pockets are generally pretty deep because they know they understand the concept of money. So <laughs> the uh, if you because other people you, know, you get some friend they used to ask us, hey, I have an idea for a website. Now they ask us, I have an idea for an app. So websites are pretty cheap to make, right? But apps are pretty expensive. So so um, let's go after the enterprise people. And, and I have a bunch of sunglasses here and from Intel and from Syncfusion because our future is going to be really bright <coughs> and then corny song comes in. Um, so, right, so Xamarin comes into this picture. There are other platforms and we'll get into those in a moment, but Xamarin tries to make it, or their goal, their mission is to make it fast, easy, and fun. Well, it's work, so it's fun is kind of relative. Um, like, I'd, I'd, I'd probably do this anyway, even if I didn't get paid, but not to some of the extent that they're making me do it. And, and like, LeBarton here just does it for fun. So um, it can be fun. And then our priorities as app builders is, is we want to make it as native app as possible, because that's what people expect. They spent $800, $900 for an iPhone. They don't want some app that looks like a website, they, or, or some app that looks like an Android one, or some app that looks like a a Windows one that's been ported there to look exactly like its original ancestor. Um, and, it, and what we're writing, not everybody has an iPhone. Some people have Androids. Some people have Windows phone. Um, so it has to work everywhere. And then it has to be integrated with, like we said, these enterprise apps. It has to be integrated into some back-end thing, because that's where all the information they really want is. And as individuals, we've got to stay current. So we could be writing this in Palm OS, um, but there's not a whole lot of work out there right now, so we had to update our still skill set. And I've updated mine several times over my career. Sometimes updated it to do a cul-de-sac, so it was like a dead end with nice, nice houses on it. Um, other times it, 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 it served me really well for 10 years or something. So this happens to be a skill set now that seems to be pretty hot. Um, so let's jump on that train while it's rolling. Um, 
And, and Xamarin, um, you know, some people may be concerned that it might not be um, robust enough to get what's done. It's enterprise grade before Microsoft bought it, and now Microsoft is using it as the as the uh, the bong, and all their other stuff is what goes in the bong. Because you got Azure, you got Team Foundation Server, you have a uh, uh, ways to monitor your app after it gets deployed. And it's a complete, complete mobile lifecycle. So we can do, um, every time your, your users, your uh, developers check in, you can do continuous integration. So it, it compiles on the, on the Mac to make sure it actually, all the code they just checked in actually functions. All right, it's your, and it's a complete mobile solution, as the previous slide just said. You, got, you can build it. And then um, I'd like to extend on the top of the platform, you get all the Microsoft services and other people's services too. They don't limit you to just using Microsoft. And uh, then there's, once you build it, there's a thing called test cloud. Um, and we'll show a picture shortly of why you need a test cloud. Because iOS is nice because if it runs on a phone, it'll probably run on an iPad. Um, and the only difference would be the size. Um, whereas Android, that's a whole other. Um, so, in Xamarin Insights, so what happens when you deploy the app? Some user says it, it crashes when I'm doing this. We can actually see why. Because when we're testing, we're testing, that's the only thing on the phone, right? Um, and we're only testing that one screen after you lock in the first time. Well, if you linger on the app and you have something else running and you switch out to the photograph, you get a phone message, um, something happens to the app. It doesn't recover or something. Well, that'll track that and say, okay, when it comes back from, from sleep and you're on this screen, it'll give you the message. And then to learn how to do all that, Xamarin has Xamarin University. And if you want to become certified in Xamarin, you have to attend the university. So it's, it's kind of um, you know, necessary. But it's necessary to learn what you're doing, too. Um, all right, so this uh, another way to do um, iOS apps, and it's mostly in the store done and done that way, is you, you hire a, an iOS guy, and he writes it in Objective-C. And you hire some Android guy, and he, or gal, and she writes it in Java, and you hire a Windows guy, and he writes it in, in a Visual Studio. And then it all gets deployed because they all, they, all, they all fit the design spec, and then some new spec comes out because some new feature has to be added in. Well, then you have to hire that other guy back to do the iOS app. The Android guy has been thrown into prison because he writes Android apps. And then the, uh, the, uh, the Windows person has moved on because it's now Windows 10 or something. So, so um, that's three sets of code you have to maintain. So uh, I just got off an AMC project, and they went with the silo approach first. So each of their stores had different features in the app because they didn't want to pay the you know, $500,000 to add a new feature to all three apps. And most of their bases they determined was iOS, so they just made the change to iOS. So the feature does not exist in Android, and the Windows has even fewer features than the iOS one did. And so that, that, that works if all you're doing is iOS. Um, but another approach to solve that problem of all the types of developers you have to hire is use a, another software like Cordova or something that writes an HTML-based app. And that works pretty well. But it kind of goes for a com uh, lowest common, common denominator. So um, you get this app that doesn't do all the functionality of an iPhone that we're expecting from the $800 device and doesn't do all the functionality of the, the Galaxy S7 or something. So, but it gets out the door. So if, if your app is just an enterprise thing, that may be a solution just for you. If all you're just doing is displaying data and you know that the users have to use your app, that's fine. But for, for the rest of them, you want to go with something that targets the, the actual device. So what Xamarin does is it's um, in the C-sharp area, which many of us know C-sharp already, so that's handy for us. We're doing a lot of the business logic and, and app logic. And, and the more we can uh, set that down to the, the, um, the common area, the better. And then we just do the UI in Xamarin. So we can do the UI for Android separately and the, and the UI for Windows and iOS. So then, then, um, so then that, that works well if, you, that's, if that's your goal. So if you're predominantly an iOS shop, you could do it in Xamarin, uh, Xamarin.iOS, it's called. And you're using all the stuff that's the same names as the things in in a, if you're doing Objective C, but the other option is Xamarin Forms, and Xamarin Forms then the code is also shared. The code for the UI is also shared, and it's in something called XAML, which is, if you recall from your Silverlight days, um, it, it looks kind of like HTML, but it's, it's actually a, a coded language. Uh, like a, HTML, if you if you code something in there, the the uh, 
the web server doesn't recognize, it just ignores it, right? No, it'll it'll cough out and say, no, no, it needs to be spelled differently. So so um, the XAML is up here, and you can you can then re some things still can't be done in the XAML. You want to personalize it a certain way for each each platform. Well, then you have to visit the platform and make make uh, actual elements there. However, they just announced last week that there's a way to extend it even further up, make that those three colored boxes even smaller. All right, so because it's .NET, you get all the .NET stuff you're used to, all right? And it's all dot .notation also. And it's also strongly typed, so you pass, if you're expecting a date, the only thing that passes a date, whereas the other languages are a little more flexible with what you send and receive. So it, it, um, those are all the things you have ac access to. This is on the Windows platform, so if you're writing a Windows app, then you get access to those also. So these have connections into those. And if you're doing an iOS app, 100% of the APIs that are in iOS are available to you in, in XAML. And same thing with Android. So once again, so, so all this stuff down here, your link and your IOO, it's all um, common in the bottom part, and then just uh, occasionally have to visit the top part for your specific device. So anything you can do in Objective-C, Swift, and Java, you can do in XAML. And because it's .NET, sometimes that's more efficient. As, as programming wise, so it's, it's more, it's because of the dot notation and things like that. It's, it's, it's a well done development environment. And then performance wise, frequently, the, the, the phone itself doesn't know who wrote the software. So they both get compiled down to, to um, native. So the, the, the actual app doesn't know, oh, Cordova wrote this or Xamarin wrote that. Um, so it, it, for each of the devices, it does compile down to the different devices. Now, uh, some people really like to get fancy with their .NET, and maybe they don't like the way uh, the Xamarin team has implemented like a dependency injection, and they want to write their own. Well, in a .NET world, we know what that does, because you know, .NET's just above the core, so it, we know that it's doing a certain thing. Well, there's an interpretive layer in there, and I met the guys last week that wrote that, and these fancy developers really frustrate them, because it may, the first time you visit the page, it may actually do what you're expecting. But when you come back a second time, something didn't get cleaned up like we were expecting it to. So in the .NET world, when we create an event, um, if the object closes down, the event goes away. So we tend, tend to get sloppy with getting rid of the event. So if we get sloppy here, it stays out there. It's no longer referenceable because the object containing it's gone away. So there are some little nuances that, if, so if, if the documentation says do your dependency injection this way, you might want to um, go that way. And then Xamarin's pretty amazing about staying up to date when there's a new version of something coming out every couple minutes. So they're, they're um, constantly up to date with um, the iOS level that comes out, the Xcode level that comes out, the uh, Android levels that come out. So they're very, if you need to be doing Marshmallow right now, it's already out there, you can start using it. So, so it's, it's uh, remarkably up to date. Now that the frustrating part about that is to do an iOS app, you have to have a Mac. So, and I have Visual Studio over here running it also. So I can write the whole app on, on the iOS device, or I can write the whole app on, on the Windows device. Well, that's two places where I gotta make sure I'm up to, up to date on the same level. So, if, so for some reason, we're going with the non-stable, the beta version of something, it has to be made on both. And then we have to download the updates at the same time. So if there's six or seven people on your team, everybody has to do it at the same time, otherwise they check in code that if someone's upgraded earlier than everybody else. They check in code, it doesn't run, breaks everything. So, all right, so uh, these, these slides will be out there so you can look at them in, on your leisure sometime. But this is uh, what they determine is the, is the breakdown of what is common and what is specific to the device. So if you're on an iOS device, 70% of it could be, could be um, shared code and then I spend 30% writing iOS specific code. And that varies per project. So, um, so remember we had that slide with the three developers doing each one individually? So if you get a piece of software that can do all three on one, that doesn't mean you just hire one developer. It's, it's somewhere between one and three, because it's still got all that, all that stuff to do. And if the person coding knows a lot about Android, that helps, because if Android's gonna work kind of it, it is quirky. Um, and then iOS has its own way of referencing things. Because the underlying 
OS, you have to know how it how the pages actually transition and navigate. So that, that that's really important to know. So some the people developers you hire need to have knowledge of those two areas. The Windows one, they're just happy you're doing it. So you know, that will take it. Um, plus, the Windows one was some, is, is developed rather recently. Um, if you ever, who, who's ever done these Objective C? Just a little segment here. So a lot of the a lot of the commands and objects start with NS, right? What's NS stand for? Next. 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 Remember when Apple was between Jobs? Steve. You know, Steve Jobs. Yeah, he was between Steve Jobs, where he wasn't there working there for a while. Um, so that's Apple was between jobs. Um, the, uh, he, he wrote another thing called Next, right? Um, and the Next became your iPhone. It got a lot smaller because when Next was this enormous thing. Um, so that, all that code still lingers from whenever that was. That was like early 90s or something, wasn't it? So, so, um, so that's, that code still lingers around. So, Actually, what's happening is people are making the mistake of targeting Windows Mobile, and a lot of the projects I'm on, it's Android, iOS, and then when desktop, is in Xamarin Forms. So you just get rid of all the small mobile crap, and you're going full board EWP for 84 inch down 8 inch tablets, and then the phone's an optional. Right. That's yeah. translated into English, that means he said, "Do this, not that." Yeah. <laughs> so he's he's a Microsoft centric, and that's fine because there's there's a billion. That's called do this, not that. Yeah. There's a there's a billion Windows devices out there, so that's quite a market, and so sort of, they're all enterprise people who are playing like you know a lot per per, per, per hour. So the you know the everybody thinks the i the uh, iPhone 6s Plus is huge, or that Note thing, right? Is huge. Microsoft has an 84 inch device. Need some really baggy pants for that. <laughs> um, so, and and your app has to has to can't just be some little tiny thing up there. It has to expand properly on the eighty four inch device. Um, all right. So, uh, quality is difficult, right? Because right? our customers want quality, right? Quality is job seven. Is that what the phrase says? Um, so, uh, oh, iOS. Especially iOS, because people people on iOS are kind of picky. You know, they, they like their fit and finish. The app has to do stuff. Android, not so much. You know, they, they can, you can get away with quite a bit because people are. The OS is kind of. The I describe uh, my Galaxy S6 as it's they hit the ball, center field, over the wall, over the stadium. Then they only run two bases because they so it's, it's perfect except they don't finish it. It's just sort of like. All right, so OS has iOS has a. Uh, Seven versions of the OS, um, and they have 20 different devices, although they're just sort of the same thing, bigger and smaller. Um, but we have to buy all 20, right? Um, and a bunch of locales. Now, that's a, that's a plus and that's a K. So there's 24,000 plus distinct Android devices. And on Android, the, the uh, XY coordinates, I forget which way, but all, all of them except one. The X, Y's in the top left, zero, zero's in the top left. Well, some other company made it in the bottom right. So all your app is upside down. It's like uh, 27 screen sizes. With, you know, it's got to be more than 15 manufacturers. All right, this next screen gives you an idea of what we're up against when somebody says, I want an Android app. Okay. <laughs> so, so, people, so I got an Apple here. I, I, I have an Android somewhere, but please don't make me demo on it. Um, <laughs> okay, the, each of these little squares represents a device. Now, a device can be the same device but with a different version of the OS. So, way up in the corner here, it says Galaxy S3 is the biggest square, and S5 is next to it. And down here, who knows? Um, so, these are all the Android devices that, that you're have, asked to work on. So, that's not conceivable, that's not realistic, right? But your boss doesn't know that. Because <laughs> in his world, his, when he says every Android device, it's just these, right? These are all some, um, yeah, this is like a, this one here is probably like the one minute elevator that runs the little buttons, or the copy machine of the library. So um, we don't really have to worry about those. Well, um, Xamarin happens to um, make a device, well, let's get there in a moment. Um, so different form factors and different features. Where is the person touching with their finger? Are they speaking into it? Those are things we have to worry about. And then, you know, that we don't know this, right? Apps are complex, whether it's a web app or, or a Windows app or a Mac app. There's all kinds of complexities. 
so you got the memory issues because uh, it may look like a fancy phone, but it only has like a small CPU and no memory. So your app may not your app may be the last one that fits. So it may not have all the resources it needs. Um, Third-party libraries people add on to their app. Not so much in iOS, but Android you can do all kinds of stuff with it. Um, Backend integrations you gotta you gotta make sure it works with your your, your backend whatever it happens to be. Um, web APIs and there's and then Android APIs change all the time too. Now, iOS is also, but Android like last year they. They, they split their wallet into a wallet and pay. So there's an Android, Android Pay now, and it only works on like three devices. Um, and it's not documented anywhere. And, and to even be, a, be a, allowed to get into it, it's quite a, quite a hassle. So um, it's a pain. All right, this, these are some of those things you gotta worry about. You gotta be aware of what tap, scroll, swipe, things, multi-finger. All right, test cloud, who's heard of test cloud? Test Cloud's really cool. I met the guys that run this. Um, the, uh, he's, just, he's a normal looking Swedish guy. Which is, what's a normal looking Swedish guy? See yeah. um, So, so um, these are all the devices you can test on. There's thousands of devices in there, and they charge quite a bit to test on them, but it's worth it. it can, there's no way you can buy every one of those devices in that color chart. So most of them are there, and what you do is you pick the ones that you want to um, Target against. There's all kinds of settings to filter the devices by region, by OS, by popularity. So you can just test on the device you need to. And it's the uh, test scripts are written in C sharp, so that makes it easy. Or you can use Calabash. Um, and it runs on just the devices you need, and you only charge for the particular moment that it's running. And it's actual physical device. And coming soon in the next couple of months, you'll be able to access that device and actually operate it with your with your mouse to see, to run your app live on that device. So it sure beats buying one. Um, and then, uh, and then when, when your test is done, they reset the app. You must be or reset the phone, what? On a uh, hardware device in the test cloud, these are not virtual. No, these are actual devices. They're sitting in a rack. They're yeah, just 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 so how many of them do they have in the same phone? Though? A, a lot. A lot, yeah, a lot. A lot. yeah. So you can probably log in there and see. Now, now they, 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 I met the guys and they, they said they threw some tricks on the, there's actually a fellow in there named Sven or something that sits there, it's in Denmark. Is he a normal looking Swedish guy? Yeah, he's a normal looking Swedish guy. He's voted most, most Western looking Swede. Um, the, uh, <laughs> that was a line from Span a lot. But, um, the, and they, 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 the one trick they played was they, make, they wrote an app that says his name. So all thousand devices in there are saying his name at the same time. Some are faster than others so it wouldn't, wouldn't quite be in sync. So, then another game they played was uh, making them all vibrate to try to make them slide off the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> so he's out there pushing them on the shelves as they're sliding off. Uh, so, so that's pretty funny. Uh, all right, so. Can I stop for a second? Um, here. For the testing of the test cloud, so do you have the capability of recording the video and if you wanted to make sure that the video came out with a certain quality level? Oh, so you mean like your app shows a video, like a YouTube video or something? Well, um, what's a, it's a physical device. All you'll be recording is the back of the shelf. Yeah. So, so um, now, when you when your when your test is done, you can then click on the test results and actually the device and actually watch it go through in a recorded video of what happened when your app was running. So you can see that, oh, that button takes up the whole screen, but it's only supposed to be half the size of the screen uh, on this particular device. You can actually see that, and you can like use the little scroll bar to slow it down and go back and forth, so that's pretty good. Now, I don't know about the video part, though. So and one thing should, that Amazon's test pod does, which is really nice, I'm wondering if it does it, is when you define your device and say, here's my app, go run it, and of course, you can log in on it. At the end, it will come, come, take screenshots of every screen and give it to you in one page. So mm. instead of having to click on every single one, just take 10 minutes to look down all this stuff and say, I'm yeah. here, 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 here. Right, and that's, that's a great handy tool because you can then grab the one screen that's an error that shows a message yeah. and send it to whoever's working on it. So, can this do that kind yeah. of thing? So, this, this may very well do that. Uh, no. yeah. Yes, I believe it does. You believe it does? Okay. Yes. Um, it'll, so it'll, it'll show you your test from in screen. All in one, but in one. The I don't know if it does that. Click, go back and click. I need to recall seeing I've seen a demo of it, and I think I saw that. 
Well, let's have, let's, we can do another, someone speaking next month, what we'll do the following month is run a session just on test cloud. Sound good? Right. And he's running it. No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a volunteer. No, but that would be a good session, because that, that devotes, that, div, that devotes, that it's, it's worth an hour. device feature, change GPS, press physical buttons, activate device scanner, rotate device. Oh, it says demo. All right, ready for, is that enough slides? Is that enough, yeah, do you have yeah, enough Xamarin yeah. dollars now? Okay, if I show you two more slides, you can pass the certification. So, I don't want to do that because I need, they need the uh, $1,400 for the university thing. Um, all right, so let's do a demo or two. All right, so. So I, I kept having to touch my Mac to make sure it was still awake so I can connect to it. And it's 122, so let's try to connect again. All right, so when you start Visual Studio and you start a, a, a cross-platform Xamarin app, this, this window pops up. And it used to be more difficult. Um, and it's oh, no. Yeah, all right. So. so it used to be more difficult. So, so. All right, so we'll delete some of these. Were you able to connect to it earlier? Yeah. So I have over here my system settings. Just looking up the IP address. Oh, now I'm 229. Okay. Same network. Okay. That would be probably a good idea. So, 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 as a demonstration, it, if the Mac has to be on your same network, and then get the IP address. Yeah, good. Right. Yeah, it should be that one again. I'll get up to the All right, so startup to um, the up the startup costs on a running an iOS app are pretty expensive because you get you used to have to buy Xamarin like like the Martin did a few months ago, and um, now now Xamarin's free. It comes with Visual Studio. Um, how much of it you get depends upon how much you pay for Visual Studio. The Community Edition you get some, the Enterprise you get all, and then uh, then you have to get a Mac. So somewhere on your network has to be a Mac, and there is something called Mac and Cloud, where you can rent a Mac, a physical Mac, by the by time. So it's a timeshare of a Mac, and for that moment, it's yours. So you can compile on the Mac. Getting the the, the app to your phone is a little more difficult because this is an Intel box. Don't don't tell Apple people that, but it's an Intel box, and your phone's not. So there are behaviors on your phone that are hard to replicate. Like on on, on the Intel box, it, it's kind of okay with object the stuff that's multi-case so capital T it small T I'm okay with that the arm chip not so much so you get burned by that a lot so you're referencing some image that's spelled the mixed case and then on the it's actually just a single case all right so we're connected to the the uh, iOS device up in the right you can see a little tiny picture that says green that we're so we're connected to it and I have here a an app that's running both on Android and iOS, and if you do file new, I won't do it, but if you do file new project, your options under there, you have an option for cross-platform, and then the, uh, the one that's selected now is, is the forms app, which is what I'll be demonstrating shortly, and then you can also do a, a native shared, which is the, the uh, where you're coding in just Android and iOS. 
All right, so I won't click on that because when you click on it and you create a new project, then you have to restore all your packages because there's been updates since they put the template out there. So that takes time. So rather than you watch me, rather than collectively watch a little thing spin, we'll go with one that's already been done. So this app, um, it demonstrates that you can do animation using XAML. In fact, the animation in XAML may be easier than an animation in the other two platforms. Uh, the uh, oh, iOS does have quite a few animation things like transitions and stuff that are quite nice and they're used to. So those are nice to have. But if you want to do other, other funky ones, we can do that. Now, if you can see the screen, is that, let me switch to light so you can see it. I have a, I have a function called die button die. Now, when things leave your screen, you can make them just go away in a hurry. You can make them fade away. You can make them slide to the left. This is much better. The button will, you click on it, and the button will slowly die, fall to the ground, and then ascend into heaven, <laughs> where all good buttons go, right? So now, at first, let's run it in Android. I have an Android emulator here written by Microsoft. So the, the Microsoft one and the Xamarin one run so much better than the, uh, the one you get from Google. One. If I started the one from Google before the meeting started, we'd still be waiting for it to come up. Um, so it's one of those why bother things. So I have the Android project selected. And then this die button die, let's go down there and see what it does. Uh, jiggle the handle. Die button die. We're gonna we're gonna set the anchor. We're gonna rotate it. We're gonna reset the anchor. And we're gonna do some transition translation which does the going to the bottom and then we translate again and then we it's it's all complicated math so all right let's run this now it ran earlier so it should run now uh, let's go get the emulator So it's starting debugging on the Android device. Sorry. All right. Hey, it says SyncPete.net. How'd that get there? All right. So we click it, and it's going to run that script in the back. And we can, I can put a debug on there if you want. But let's watch what it does. So it falls down. <laughs> So that's, that's pretty cool, because um, iOS people really want stuff like that to happen. Um, <laughs> and then on an Android, while you're doing this, you can be harvesting all their contacts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that, 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 that little trick and, and a couple others are, are be sure to miss a bunk. <laughs> right. uh, which, by the way, is autograph. Not by me, by Charles Petzl, who wrote the book. All right, let's, for jollies, let's, let's stop this. And then right click down here, and we'll do set as startup project, and do nothing else except change it to simulator. And I'm gonna run it on a 9.3 iOS 6S, all right? So you don't know, let me swing this around, oops. All right, so it's not running on that screen yet. All right. Now, it takes a little longer to port it over to the iOS device. Now, which I can do segue while it's, while it's doing that. Um, they just announced that there's going to be an iOS simulator that you can just have on your Windows machine. So now what's nice about that, what's nice about that is um, if you look at an angle, I turn the screen off. There's fingerprints all over this. Why? Because there's fingerprints on that that actually do something when I touch it. <laughs> so if the iOS emulator were on here, I'm working on an app where I have to do pinch and zoom. Um, I could pinch and zoom. On here, I just have to think it works. So like you're saying when all this stuff comes through, I can just put my Mac in a dark corner in a closet and totally ignore it after that? Yeah, but that's where you are, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Yeah. Does it work? Okay, there it is. So I will, I will, if this were a Windows machine, I could do this, but it's not. So I have to do this. Um, so can, can you see that? And then it actually looks a little nicer on here anyway. So it falls down. 
and it ascends into heaven like all good so buttons do. One, one little trick, if you set up a sharing on that thing, then I just type the NC to go over to it. Right. Uh, so you get a remote session. You can also use like Teammate or uh, whatever, uh, a couple of the free programs. Yeah. Remote screen transfer. Or Chrome desktop. But you have to get all your work done in like 20 minutes because it turns itself off. Um, I'm sorry, I missed something. This let you deploy as a test instead of to an angle or sitting that type of simulator to an actual iPhone you have on your back. Yes, you see the test push button. Yes, I have an iPhone here. I can, I can show that. I'll see it. Actually, we'll do another one. We'll do another, we'll do another one where I can. I have a. Huh? I was going to say in the next release, what they announced at Evolve was right now, if you want to test a physical device, you've got to plug it into the Mac. Um, with a new driver they got coming, you can plug your iPhone or your iPad or whatever I think you're playing with. You can plug it into the PC and it has a remote USB capability back to the Mac. So literally, the Mac goes to the closet and then you wire into the PC to USB. All right, so that was a. You still need a Mac. You still need a Mac. Oh. You will be able to use Mac and Cloud for that. Yeah. So then it. Then it. Yeah. No, no, no. You need full more real, real, real Mac. Yeah, and you need the Mac anyway to to uh, tell the yes. tell the operating system that your your um, device is a development so, device. Yeah, you, know, you look at it, you're like, oh my god, I want to spend twelve hundred bucks. Go buy a little Mac Mini, four hundred bucks, stick it in the corner, remote it to it, you're good to go. It's, it works great. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it fits in your backpack real good. It's insulting, right? Well, I want to smart guy driving the innovator that the Mac, and they don't know the difference. We respect licensing agreements. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's all breaker, lawbreaker. But they do not. Oh, they do not sell OS X. They do not license OS X for use except right. on their hardware. Yeah. Right. It does. Yes. It works good. Yeah. So, so it's not our. It's not. So, so we can buy these neat products. Uh, so, all right. So, let's, I'm going to switch over and do some development on the Mac now, um, just to stay in one spot. So, we've, we've I've demonstrated that we can do it on a Android emulator here. We can do the iOS here, and uh, there was something I was going to say. Oh, these. Um. All right. So. The. Uh, oh, that's what it was. The. One of the product team people, the product team people at these conferences are the ones who make like Samuel Studio. Right? So uh, during his presentation, he said, "Clap or the or the feature goes away." <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that power, so, so you can just sit there. And the, however, I do have the power to. I'm, the app I'm going to show you how to do is um, using cognitive services. It's this thing from Microsoft that was just called something in Oxford, and and. Um, it uh, one of the, the feature I'll show is it takes a picture of your face and determines what's your emotion. So I can tell who's paying attention, and who's happy with the listening. So okay, good now. because the resolution is so much higher now. Um, <laughs> why does it do that? Why can't it do that all the time? Okay. So a uh, little background, uh, Xamarin's site has, has, has um, plenty of uh, places to go find how to do stuff. There's, there's, there's sample codes, there's, there's uh, walkthroughs. And the GitHub has, has all the chat, all the code that's in that book. Um, that book only goes to 17, and there's uh, 29 chapters, 24 chapters now. So all the sample codes in there, and and that's it. So um, all right, let's do you want to do an app? What do you want? Which one do you want to do first? We'll do uh, yeah, same studio here.
Okay, this is the app that we're going to use to get bigger. How do you make this bigger? There we go. And how do you how do you make the text bigger? There we go. All right. This see the function up here is called get happiness. All right. If, if, if only it were just a function we could call. Um, well, it is now. <laughs> so um, the uh, this is using the the. Uh, cognitive services, and we're going to use that to determine happiness level of a photograph we're taking. Right? Okay, we're going to need some volunteers to be happy or sad. We can do sad too. Um, all right. So, so uh, we're going to is it we're we can do a wait. We're going to so this is codes all out there, and and uh, the only difference is when you register, you get a key. So you're welcome to use my key or go and get your own. Um, it's I think it's free right now anyway. So the now this is a a, a Xamarin iOS app. So notice we have a, if you're familiar with iOS, we've got a view controller here. And we've got, and, uh, so that's, that's a iOS thing. So in the view controller, we, we have a press button and we have some functions behind that. Still in C sharp. And then because we're using a camera, we have to actually use my phone. Is this in Xamarin Studio and not Visual Studio? Yeah, we're in Xamarin Studio. Because we're on a Mac. And are you using No, no Windows on this Mac. Okay. So it's strictly iOS. Because Xamarin Studio, it's a good point, Xamarin Studio does exist for PC also. So in case for some reason you're not using Visual Studio on a PC. All right. Now, I already have it on here, but we'll, we'll deploy it again. Just to now, to set your phone up to be deployable is um, quite a few steps. Um, it's like 10 steps, a little over 20 steps. So you have to go to their website, you know, set up a some sort of this, and then some keychain that. So it's 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 quite a few steps, but um, it's doable. And give Apple hundred dollars per year, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know if you need to do that to to so to, to do the initial yes. thing. It'll cost you hundred bucks for the aggravation, you know. Really? Okay. Yeah. So hundred bucks. But in in iOS world, that's that's the only thing they have that's that cheap. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> So, so you should just be happy to pay it. Yeah. Um, so, all right, I'm going to deploy the app. So we're going to run it. Now up here I have, it, uh, once I plug my phone in, up in the top left there, I'm debugging to my I go. So this is my phone. Ready? There. So I'm going to take a photo. So who wants to be in the photo? Come come closer. You'd like a friendly volunteer? I guess. All right. So we're going to take a photo. I picked the photo button. I'm happy. Come closer. Come closer. So we want to be happy or sad? Any, uh, show of hands, sad? Happy? OK, be happy. Come closer. I need your uh, face. Every time you have me, you might want to come that way or get me out of the way of that. OK, that come works. closer this way. So we're going to take a picture of him. Better. Yeah. Ready? What do you want? I'm going to zoom in and take his picture. And I use the photo. And then it's processing. So it's going up to the web and hitting the Microsoft service. Processing. So he's 99.98% uh, happy. Hmm. All right. Just a little bit missing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, perhaps, perhaps there's another beer for you or something. All right. Who wants to be sad? We'll just try to. Thank you anyway. Yeah. Want to be sad? You'd be sad. That's a missing two percent. Want to be sad? Okay, we need a sad person just to prove I'm not just randomly putting numbers. You'd be sad. Okay, so this time come over here, and we'll do a let's see. Take a photo. You sad? Now that's pretty sad. You can't see it, but he looks pretty sad. No. Okay. All right. We'll use that photo, and it's it's processing, processing, and. It's 8.64% sad. So you could be sadder. I could be sadder. Yeah, I, I don't know what those numbers actually mean. They're in the code, and it actually does a, some math on that. They keep going to so math. So does that mean I'm 92% happy? Or, 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 or negative 92%. Negative 90%. Yeah. So apparently this, this, if you get happiness, this score here, 
100 percent would be, I guess, happy, and then the further oh, there it is. So it puts the result <laughs> the further down you go. It's, it's not a frowny face. Oh, okay. Yeah. So th that the and cognitive services has um, voice recognition, and you can write your own little dictionary. So in case you're medical, and people say you know you know whatever whatever they say in that jargon, it would recognize that because in regular world nobody talks like that, but in the medical world they do. So that's so just a pretty neat functionality. So that would be worth a presentation on its own also. All right, now, now the, uh, okay, there's one other demonstration just to prove that things can be done. I have a, let's kill that. This, this app here uh, consumes a JSON file and it populates a seat view on an airplane. I'll show you the JSON file if I can find it. Can't find it. Oh well. Now, in this one, we will run it not on the phone, but we'll run it on the debugger. on the uh, simulator, so back over to the simulator. Change code before you come over someplace and it doesn't work. Oh well, sorry for that. I was going to show you how to consume a, a JSON file. It's a physical file, but it's typically coming from the web, determining the number of seats, and it just shows like this. Is it using like an HTTP client to do it? It will be, but right now no, because it because I'm t doing just the seat thing, so I extracted the JSON file, so I don't have to log into the app and pick a destination and stuff. So. So you just lost it. I call that Microsoft. Microsoft Magic? Yeah. Well, uh, or unit testing. So I, I extracted just the unit I'm working on. So you I don't know. You said get it. You just said a whole bunch of stuff really fast that I didn't really? understand a word of it. All right. Well, it is like this. So, so the uh, rather than rather than boot up the whole app every time I want to test this particular feature, I, I've extracted just the data I need and just the page I need. So I just I just run that one page because for the seat selection on on this particular app, it's like seven layers deep. And you have to pick your destination and stuff like that. So I'm testing all this other stuff as I'm getting to my thing, and then I find out. Oh, what the heck is seat selection? Oh, it's an airline app. It's a, like when you're booking an airline flight. Oh, oh, you mean yeah. it? Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, I have it on here. Some term in mobile that I never heard. Of. Seat selection? Yeah. No. It's mobile. They're moving. <laughs> so. All right. So here, here it is running from a previous deploy I had, and let's see if it's a friendly looking. One. So I, I built in a, a zoom. Yeah, so you can zoom in and see what, what fat slob is sitting next to you. So, and not sit next to them. Yeah. And that's using a, another uh, product called Mr. Gesture, which is like 12 bucks and it adds all this gesture features in there that would otherwise be difficult to, to write. Yeah. Okay, so that's, those are the ends of the demonstrations I have. Are there any, dare, dare I ask, questions? Um, yeah, I think there is. There are? Besides, what does seat selection mean? No, you had said something before about you called the. They've got a different model than Xamarin, obviously, which is doing like an HTML app that's running within a phone. Yeah. They don't use Apache's. I think that's Cortana. Oh, what? Or Cordova. I always Cordova. forget the name. Right. You yeah. can interact with the functions of the phone. Yeah, and I, I actually Joe's thought that was. I actually thought that that was easier. Have you tried it? Yeah. Okay, good. So I don't know anything about that. Cordova so. is um, actually a little harder because what you're doing is you're going through an HTML shim 
and then you're calling out a native. I just it's it's the same kind of thing where you got to write a thumb layer down at the bottom. Just like if you found something in iOS that wasn't mapped, or you, right. you or another native. product. Yeah. Like when you're trying to load a native file or something, you got to write a little yeah. thumb layer. You know, here you got dependency services over in Cordova. You do separate directory plugin, mm -hmm. um, kind of platform override stretches for it. Okay. Does that answer your question? So on, on those, those web-based ones, those HTML-based ones, yes, you can access the camera and stuff like that. Yes. Um, and, some, and sometimes the, the Cordova or whatever happens to be builds in the little hooks you do. Other times not. So if, if um, and same thing here, if I'm, like one project I was working on, there was a scanner to scan barcodes. Well, that was some third-party product that made this, this um, C library that you then had to bring in. And putting the wrapper on that so your app could access it is pretty tricky. And then if, it, if the app was using Cordova, which is HTML based, it'd be even trickier. So, um, but it can be done. People do it. But then you, end, but the thing is, you end up with an app that looks, looks. Like I like doing it just because the device independence is easy. The what? It's type device independent. Doing device independence in terms of the screen and the UI is, you know, it's a response. Yeah, about and in many scenarios hard. that works just fine because if it's an enterprise app that's internal, that they don't care, or you have to use it anyway, then then that works just fine. Yeah, but if you got that impression you're not using the layout panels, right? Yeah, you need to study how to do flow layouts and stack panels and stuff like that. They got the same kind of constructs, they're just not named as nicely as it would be in the HTML world. And then this 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 seat there's some airline app I've worked on for Navitaire. Um, they they've written the app in about every Xamarin, huh? I don't know, I understand Xamarin. Oh. Even after even after an hour of me talking? <laughs> have you been listening? Um, no. Well, I have a book for you. I can use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the thing, the thing is, you got just gotta download it and play with it, and if and you have to have something really to do until you're actually working on a project, even if it's like doing a website for your dog, like we used to do, do an app for your dog now. So, yeah. And there's all these friends that want to have an app idea; they want you to write. Yeah. So.